So good evening and welcome. My name is Zara Jamal. I'm really happy to be here. I am a senior research associate at the Center for the Study of Gender and Sexuality and the Department of Political Science here at the University of Chicago. This year I'm leading an initiative called Civil Islam, the purpose of which is to promote critical dialogue on Islam in the face of local, national, and international tensions and hostilities. Um, since Muslims comprise about 20% of the world's population, understanding and engaging this diverse group, including in the United States, is really crucial for a peaceful and pluralistic future. Today's panel is entitled The Anti-Sharia Movement Behind the Controversy, and it's our second initiative. It's sponsored by the Center for the Study of Gender and Sexuality, the Divinity School, the Institute for Social Policy and Understanding, the Center for the Study of Race, Politics, and Culture, the Office of Multicultural Student Affairs, and the Office of Spiritual Life at Rockefeller Chapel. And I'd like to express my deep gratitude to each of these entities for their generous support. I'd also like to thank Dean Margaret Mitchell, um, Director Linda Zerilli, Associate Director Gina Olson, Sarah Tui and Ashley Cargill for their generous uh, hard work and support for putting this event together. We'll be recording this event and the link to it will be made available online in the coming weeks at gendersexuality.uchicago.edu. We'll also be holding a breakfast event tomorrow morning for, with our panelists from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. here in Swift Hall in the first floor common room. Um, so please do uh, come if you can. Uh, RSVP to a cargill at uchicago.edu, and we'll also have a sign-up sheet going around at the end of the event this evening. And now for the panel. I want to spend a quick moment to explain first what Sharia is. For Muslims, Sharia is the law of God, the divine law. Fiqh is the human articulation and interpretation of that law in the form of legal rules created by religious scholars interpreting the scripture. There are many Fiqh schools of law. This pluralism allows the divine Sharia to be interpreted widely and flexibly enough to accommodate personal choice. According to Islamic legal theory, no Fiqh rule can demand obedience because every such rule is the product of human interpretation and is thus potentially fallible. In other words, no human can claim to know God's law through enough certainty to impose it on others. Therefore, so-called Sharia laws in Muslim-majority countries is a modern post-colonial phenomenon that exists not because Sharia or the divine law demands it, but rather because of a complex series of political events historically. Often in Muslim-majority countries today, political actors select certain fiqh rules to the exclusion of others that are equally legitimate alternatives. There is often little or no opposition because the Muslim public is unschooled in Islamic jurisprudence and assumes that the rule is divinely directed. Similarly, anti-Sharia activists in the United States highlight a few objectionable fiqh rules to argue that Sharia as a whole is offensive. The anti-Sharia campaign has been successful based on the premise, amenable to many nativists, that multiculturalism causes us to com compromise our American values in order to accommodate foreign ones. Yet when American Muslims say that they live according to Sharia, they're asking for American law to recognize their personal choice of religious rules or fiqh, but they are not asking American courts to legislate Islamic law for everybody. Indeed, similar to Jewish halakha, Islamic law is a complete system of law that does not need state power in order to govern individual behavior. Some might say that the anti-Sharia movement is at best a gross misunderstanding and at worst an institutionalized national form of xenophobia and bigotry rooted in fear and cloaked in the language of nativism, patriotism, and national security. Indeed, more than two dozen states in this country have cons considered some uh, form of Sharia ban, and several have actually passed these bans on the use of Islamic law in their <coughs> states. Similarly, a number of political candidates have been using this issue as part of their campaign. The purpose of today's panel is to create a better understanding of what Sharia is, the intent American Mus Muslims have in its use, what's behind the anti-Sharia movement, and the future of the movement, both domestically and internationally. First, we will hear from Wajahat Ali. Wajahat is a lawyer, playwright, essayist, and humorist whose work, The Domestic Crusaders, is the first major play about American Muslims living in a post-9-11 America. It was published by McSweeney's in 2011. Wajahat also writes for The Guardian, Washington Post, Salon.com, and Huffington Post. He is co-editor of All American, 45 Men on Being Muslim, and blogs at goatmilk.wordpress.com. 
He has been instrumental in designing and implementing the U.S. Department of State's Generation Change Leadership Training Program that empowers youth to be global change agents and social entrepreneurs. On behalf of the State Department, he has led training programs in Pakistan, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, the Philippines, Nepal, and Sri Lanka. He has also been a consultant to UC Berkeley, his alma mater, on their program on Islam, Youth, and New Media. Wajahat was a co-author of the widely read report by the Center for American Progress called Fear Incorporated. Drawing on this re research, Wajahat will tell us about the Islamophobia industry and the creation and dissemination of the anti-Sharia threat, how it began, the players behind it, as well as its international dimensions and implications. Next, we will hear from Julie McFarland, who's on the end. And uh, Julie is a professor on the Faculty of Law at the University of Windsor, professor of the practice at Kroc Institute for International Peace Studies at the University of Notre Dame, and a fellow at the Institute for Social Policy and Understanding. She is author of the best-selling book, The New Lawyer, How Settlement is Transforming the Practice of Law, University of British Columbia Press, 2008, and editor of Dispute Resolution, Readings and Case Studies, Edmund Montgomery, 2010, which is widely used in Canadian and US law schools. Her most recent work, which examines the use of Islamic family law principles and values in divorce processes conducted by third parties in North American mosques, is entitled Islamic Divorce in North America, Choosing a Sharia Path in a Secular Society, and was published by Oxford Univer University Press in April 2012. Today, she'll be telling us about the most common uses of Sharia for American Muslims in rituals of marriage and divorce. She'll focus on what the courts do with Islamic law, discuss the cases and conventions of referring to foreign laws, and unpack the legal fictions that are being spun about Sharia. Lastly, we have Leon Bomback, who's in the middle. Leon is currently a PhD candidate at Emory University, researching faith-based dispute resolution among Muslims in the United States. She holds a BA from Brown, an MTS from Harvard Divinity, and a JD from the University of Georgia, where she was editor-in-chief of the Law Review. She clerked on the US Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit and worked as an associate at Latham and Watkins. Im impressively, she was one of the drafters of the Report and Resolution Against Anti-Sharia Legislation that was formally adopted by the American Bar Association in August 2011. The title of her talk today is An Overview of Anti-Sharia Legislation Across the United States, which examines the so-called anti-Sharia bills and laws, as well as the legal and practical impact of such le legislation.